Michael, uh, Tourmaline and uh, Clean Energy Fuels recently announcing a, uh, I guess it's a joint partnership to uh, build compressed natural gas stations along highways in, uh, I guess, Western Canada. Uh, take us through the deal and uh, tell us a little bit about the timing. Why was this right right now and why clean energy? Uh, well, it's a, a joint venture between Termaline and uh, Clean Energy. Uh, clean Energy is the largest operator of CNG or compressed natural gas uh, stations in the United States. So they're a, a logical uh, entity to come up and and you know put the same thing in place in in Canada. We're the largest gas producer uh, in Canada, so it makes sense. And then with us today also was uh, Mullen Trucking, so Murray Mullen, um, and you know they're committing to use the stations. And you know why now? Um, the latest generation of CNG or natural gas engines are available for heavy haul trucks. The eighteen wheelers. Uh, they're 15 liter engines and that's kind of what we need in Canada and through Cummins and Kenworth those engines are now available so this is the the time to do it. We see it as a wonderful opportunity to reduce emissions because burning natural gas is uh, infinitely better than than burning diesel. It's also an opportunity to use the abundant natural gas resources uh, that we have in in Alberta and British Columbia. For us, tourmaline, it's kind of the logical extension or the next step in our diesel displacement initiative. So we've been uh, systematically getting all our drilling rigs off diesel and onto natural gas. Uh, and now we're moving our frack spreads. Those engines have just evolved uh, technologically as well. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll get them off diesel and onto nat gas. Uh, so we have over the last five years displaced over 100 million liters of diesel in our field operations. Uh, but because nat gas is cheaper, uh, we've actually saved over $100 million, and that includes the, the replacement cost or the cost of the natural gas that replaces the diesel. So it's kind of shareholders and stakeholders get a double win. Uh, you get a cleaner environment, uh, and uh, it actually, uh, these initiatives uh, have a, a you know reasonable return as well. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned this is for uh, commercial transportation for uh, for heavy duty trucks. Uh, one of the challenges when it comes to uh, energy transition is the infrastructure. Um, this, of course, this uh, joint partnership uh, that you've just announced is for 20 CNG stations over the next five years. Um, let's talk about the steps that it'll take. Uh, to build this out, given Canada's geography? Yeah, well, the best part of the infrastructure story is actually the natural gas infrastructure, which is all there uh, across the country. Uh, so we can get the gas to the sites. The building of the stations that they cost, you know, around $5 million each. So the first, the first one's already built. Uh, there'll be four in place uh, towards the end of 2024. And then you're right, we talked about 15 to 20 uh, by 2026. Um, and, you know, we see it uh, evolving from there as the number of the NAC gas engines uh, delivered from the engine makers, Cummins et al., um, you know, starts to yeah, increase. Uh, and, you know, the sky's the limit on this. Um, the If you converted all the 18 wheelers, just the 18 wheelers in Canada to nat gas uh, off diesel, it'd be around 1.6 BCF a day. Obviously, we're not going to convert them all, but even if it's only 10 to 20 percent, you're talking, you know, uh, two to three hundred million a day of, of gas demand. And, you know, we have plenty of gas uh, out west. So it's uh, and, and then you're looking at a, a really meaningful emission reduction. And it's not just CO2. I mean, diesel, you get NOx and SOx and particulate matter. And that's what actually creates smog. Uh, and that gas has none of that. So uh, it burns 90 percent cleaner than diesel. So it's it's a big win and it's taking advantage. It's being pragmatic economic. Uh, with you know resources that we have now. Uh, when you expand on this conversation uh, with respect to what our neighbors are doing uh, in the south and where Canada kind of stacks up on this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, energy transition uh, road or path, uh, how do you see uh, Canada fitting into that equation? Where do we stand? 
Uh, well, the best thing Canada can do, we think, and of course, you know, we are the largest gas producer, so take it with a grain of salt, but, um, you know, is LNG, I mean, that uh, is what we should be doing. We've got the lowest emission natural gas in the world. If we don't supply it, somebody else will. Uh, Nat gas is in the whole energy stack as we transform it, and we like the term transformation better than uh, transition. It's going to be 40 plus percent of the entire energy stack. Nat gas also enables renewables and it actually enables hydrogen. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the best thing Canada can do for the global atmosphere is supply as much of this growing Nat gas demand in Asia and India with Canadian gas, get electrical gen uh, in Asia off coal uh, and on to nat gas. Uh, each BCF a day of LNG is 15.4 megatons annually of uh, CO2 emissions eliminated. So a four BCF a day project, which is what the size of LNG Canada is going to be if they FID phase two, um, it reduces 25% of the emissions from the entire Canadian oil and gas industry in one fell swoop, and that includes oil sand. And so these are meaningful numbers. Um, China uh, has an enormous CNG business, recognizing that it's diesel that creates a lot of the smog along with burning coal. So they're already up to uh, you know close to three BCF a day of CNG, doing exactly what we're doing here. Uh, lastly, um, the federal government uh, tabled the uh, spring budget. In it were various, I guess, uh, measures when it comes to uh, green energy. From your vantage point, did you like what you saw coming out of the uh, federal budget? Uh, um, well, they didn't have a lot in there for natural gas, but the reality is, uh, you know, us in particular, we're not asking uh, for a lot. I mean, we're going and doing this uh, with our own capital. Um, uh, we just, all we want from the federal government is support, uh, for growing, uh, Canada's natural gas business, actually growing our production, uh, not shrinking it because it's a, we've got the best, uh, you know, gas resources in the world. They're not that deep. They're not that high pressure. They're relatively inexpensive on a worldwide basis to develop and it's the lowest emission. So, you know, there's. There's no borders in the global atmosphere, so we should be using Canadian natural gas. And all we ask for the federal from the federal government is be a supporter. It's a asset, not a liability.